How's it going, everybody? Are you good? Great. So, this is part two of the light bar series that I'm doing. Uh, if you haven't seen the first episode, go back and see that. Um, it's pretty good. We made these little guys. I'm making light pods, but this is easily, this technique is easily adaptable to a long light bar, such as that over here. So as you can see, I've got one long light bar on my scaler, and I'm just making little light pods to go in the back wheel wells to shine down forward as rock lights. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making the actual housing, as you can see here. It's got a hole in the back for mounting, well, the back over there for mounting and a slot in the side for um, the wire to go through. The L bracket, for whatever purpose your light bar is for, you can adapt the bracket to that. And then the cover. Of course, some of these techniques are going to be multiplied longer if you're making a long light bar. But um, for me, it's just small. So materials you're going to need is a piece of channel aluminum, the half inch, so this is um, half inch by half inch uh, aluminum channel and you're going to need it one inch longer than the length of the motherboard that we made last episode um, so that you can properly um, make the casing. And some sheet aluminum. I don't know what gauge this is. I want to say it's like 16 gauge maybe. Um, but just a piece of this. This is just scrap that I had. And you don't need that much. If if you need if you're doing a long bar, you'll need more. If you're doing a short one, you'll need less. I only need about that much. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cut an L shape out of this um, channel. Or really what we're going to do is we're going to cut along, sorry, along here, along this bottom edge, and the rest of it off. I don't know if that makes sense, but once I do it, you'll see what I mean. Alright, just took a couple minutes um, and cut out the L shape that I was talking about. So now you're going to end up with this funny thing. Don't throw away these pieces because you're going to use these as uh, your brackets. Okay, over at the vise, we're going to take our piece and we're just going to put it in there and clamp it so that it's like pretty much level with the jaws of the vise and that is so that it bends over properly. Grab our hammer and just knock this over. There you go. We'll need a little bit more shaping, but um, for now that's pretty good. You can put it on the edge and pound it over a little bit more too. Uh, there will probably end up being a little bit extra sticking off the end there. Uh, we'll cut that off uh, later. So same thing on the other side, line it up. Tighten it and knock it over. There you go. You'll probably need to do a little bit more shaping with it, um, including cutting off these little uh, side pieces, which uh, we'll do right now. You can clamp it in your, or when you clamp it in your vise to cut the side pieces off, you can use that time to also kind of squeeze the sides in a little bit better. Um, that way it's nice and tight in there. So that's going to be like that. What you'll do now is I have a little anvil on the back of my vise and I'm just going to pound these corners down a little bit. Just kind of trying to get it to flatten out a little bit in the back. Just make it look a little nicer. Yeah, there you go. And then, you know, uh, as you need it, you can shape it more and, you know, whatever. Um, but this is pretty good. And then all the rough edges we will uh, file off later on. So now that we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to drill, well, I'm going to drill a hole straight through the back of it. 
um, using my one-eighth inch drill bit. But uh, this will all this will be custom for everybody, de uh, depending on how you're going to mount your light bar or light pod. Uh, you'll drill the hole in a different place. I'm just going to put it straight in the back. Cool. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Dremel, or in my case, Roto Zip, even though I hate this thing, and we're going to cut a slot in here for for our wire to go out. And when you cut it, you want to make sure that you kind of push the blade back and forth a little bit to widen up the kerf um, so that the wire will fit through when you're done. Allowing for my wire to fit through real nice because we're going to be uh, gluing this wire in eventually. And we want to make sure that we put, there's enough space on both sides for glue so that it acts as like a little, um, basically just a little um, like edge softener for us. So I'm just going to file off the burr here real quick before we do the next step. You also want to get a sharpie for marking out uh, your bracket. So I'm going to take my uh, bracket here. I'm also going to file this one a little bit so that it sits flush on the back. Of course I'll round over all the edges and everything too. Um, but for starters we'll just take it and we'll hold it like that on the back of the casing roughly centered and take our sharpie and just dot in that hole there alright there we go, I got my mark on there, it's the more centered one I messed up um, which happens so again just drill this out with um, the 1 8 inch drill bit and 1 8 inch because that is the size that I found that a 3 millimeter screw will fit through very nicely. So now that we held this up against the back, this should be very nicely lined up. Which it's, uh, it's alright. It's alright. It's not the best, but uh, it'll do for now. So now is a good time to go over all these edges and stuff and file them down a little bit because they're all going to be very rough. Uh, you don't have to do too much on the casing, but if you want to, you can. I'm just going to do a little bit, and then once I'm done with this, I'll come back to you and we'll work on the top cover piece. There, you can simply just round the corners off uh, with a file, or I have a metal shear, so I just nipped off the corners and um, did them that way. You're also going to want to put a hole in this side, and you're going to want to make it uh, kind of offset because we're going to put a nut here. So. Um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, uh, which is what I'm going to tell you to do, because I don't, I don't know, I don't have a good method of it, so I'm just going to, I don't know, stick it there for now. There you go. Now i got two holes in it, one for the light bar, or one on the light bar side, one on the uh, truck side. So now we're going to make the cover plate, like this guy here. Because I'm doing a small light bar, um, I'm just gonna. I know the distance between the between the LEDs, and so I'm literally just gonna measure that onto the metal and drill those holes. But if you're doing a long one, what I did on the one that I have on my scaler is, I I hot glued a piece of proto board onto the aluminum, and then I went over to the drill press. And what I did was I drilled a little pilot hole through the um, through the proto board onto the aluminum, so that I knew exactly, so I knew that, so I knew the exact center of every hole. And I would recommend you doing it that way. I'm not going to do it that way for this because it, I just have two. But if you had more, definitely do it that way. All right. So I cut a little piece of aluminum with the shear or with my shoe, you can use a, a Dremel or something like that. I'm going to take the piece that I already made and overlay it on top. If you're doing a long light bar, I suggest you use the method that I explained earlier. Cleaned it up with a file. Make sure that it fits over top of our LEDs. And it does. Actually, we are going to have to, to make the motherboard fit into the casing. So. Uh, use whatever means you need to to get it to fit um, because then based on how it fits 
we will trim the cover plate to uh, fit there. Okay, I got my motherboard fitted in there pretty good. Um, took a little bit of um, cutting and stuff, but I got it in there. Um, this isn't going to be how it is though, permanently though. We're going to have to take it out to make sure you can still take it out. Um, I flattened out this piece because it was a little bit potato chipped. And just like that, it fits over top really nice. Now, again, just kind of eyeball it for cutting the back. I know, I know, it's probably not the greatest reputation for me to have. But, that's kind of what you're going to do is just hold it on there and cut it off. Well, I'm going to cut it off using a shear. But, uh, you can mark it so that... Um, you know exactly where to cut, how much you need to cut off, you know, you can do all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, the lead comes out the slot that we cut, and the slot will get filled up with, um... Sweet, there we go. Mine is weird and off-center because of the way that I had to, um... put the board in the case. But, hey, it's a light, and I don't think many people are going to notice or care. Um, it bugs me a little bit, but... I honestly don't really care at all. So, if you haven't heard already, I'm trying to sell my Yeti. Um, it is on the Northern California Craigslist, and I already know which truck I'm getting next, but I'm not going to tell anybody what it is, and if we can get to 100 subscriptions, I will, uh, I will unbox the truck on camera. I'm going to buy the truck as soon as I have the money for it, but I'm not going to open it until you guys, yeah, you, I'm looking at you, press that subscribe button so we can get an unboxing video in here. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy so much as to leave a like, please subscribe for that new truck. Um, and, yeah, stay tuned for next time. Next time we'll be putting it all together. Won't be installing it, but we'll just be putting it all together. So, yeah, I will see you next time, guys. Later.